began, I'm going to start by um, reading a verse which you will recognize in Isaiah 43. Just going to take it out of context and just read one verse to bring a phrase to you. Verse 26 of Isaiah 43, put me in remembrance. Isn't that, that that's a, that's just, I always struggled with that verse. You know, why would you have to remind God of something? Yeah, I just thought, you know, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I mean, I've heard people pray that way, and they say, Lord, I remind you, and I just, I think, I'm not going to do that, because I just can't bring myself to do it. Because I really didn't understand, how, you know, I mean, how, why would we need to remind God of anything? He doesn't forget anything. And then, I don't know, four or five years ago, I, I was actually studying the word testimony that I shared last night, and, and the fact that it and its root, the root concept in the word doesn't just mean to talk about something in the past, but it means to do that again. So I was studying that, and one of the lexicons sent me to the word remember. And they said it's kind of like that word. It has a dual meaning. It doesn't just mean recall something, but it means to recall the past and do something about it. So the concept is not so much, it's, it's sometimes it is remembering because you forgot, but sometimes it's not remembering something as in you forgot it. This might be a good example. For 30 years you've been waiting, saving, planning to build your dream home. But you've never done it because it just wasn't time. You didn't have the funds. You just, maybe your job, just you needed, you couldn't do it yet. But then the day comes when you've, you have the funds, you know it's time, you're going to build that house. You, you remember all that you've thought about that house. You don't, you're not saying you forgot about it. Yeah. It's your dream home. You're saying you pulled it up and started taking action. So you got an architect and you, 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 you get the permits and if maybe you bought or maybe you had the land and you built it. You remembered your dream home. But you had never forgotten it. You just finally pulled it up and took action. So when we say to the Lord, remember this, we're not saying, have you forgotten? We're saying, would you, would you take action on this now? So that word is used quite a few times in Scripture in ways where it would say, the Lord, for example, remembered Hannah. And she conceived. Well, it's not saying he forgot about Hannah. Oh, my goodness, I forgot Hannah. Is saying, he said, I know what I promised her, and now it's time, and I'm going to do it. He remembered his promise to Abraham. And can I say this in Georgia? I think I can. When he remembered his promise to Abraham, all hell broke loose in Egypt. <laughs> Literally. Because it's time. He took action. Samson repented, and God remembered Samson. We well, hadn't forgotten about him. He said, now I can do something for him. So I'm asking God to remember the forward. I'm asking God to remember America, and I'm asking God to remember your state. And the promises, I'm asking him to remember your children. So you go before the Lord and you say, hey, hey, here, you told me you're going to do this. My faith is, is in you to do this. I'm asking you to move now. So when we pray, and I'm going to move on, 
because that just I just want that in I just want that in your psyche. I want that in your mind when you pray over your state. I want you, I want you you to know that God doesn't forget, but God does have a time. That's why I'm sharing that with you. God God puts events together and and he he brings us to the right time and then he acts. But he's not forgotten his promise. And he's not forgotten you. But as we pray, I'm going to move on to this point and stay here in the, on this one for a little while. I haven't talked about this in probably years. But the Lord took me in my thinking this morning and praying to Genesis 1. That's a good place to start, isn't it? <laughs> when he created the heavens and the earth and all that we see around us. The earth was without form and void. Those words mean barren. Not just empty like he hadn't done anything yet. The words mean sterile, barren, no ability to reproduce. There were no seeds. There was no life at that point. And then he spoke, of course. Jesus said, let there be. It says the Holy Spirit was there brooding. I think that's the King James word. Moving. Moving was the King James word. Some translations say brooding, some say hovering. The word is rakaf in Hebrew. It's, it, it's a word that, a brood is a pretty, is a pretty good uh, translation. Hovering is okay. Overshadowing would be okay. But it's a reproductive term. Really, there's no way really to, to say what I'm about to say without seeming like I'm, I'm maybe a little too graphic about it. But it's the word for a man hovering over his bride in the act of intimacy, intimacy and marriage. It's intercourse. It's, it's, a, it's a reproductive term. Yes. Rakoff. But it's not just limited to, to that. It, Hebrew language is, is just kind of different. So it's not just used for, to describe a man and woman, it's used to describe the Holy Spirit when he comes into a place and hovers. But it is meant to convey the fact that when he does that, he is reproducing. He's doing something to bring forth. It's an amazing word. It's really where we get the concept. If you think about it, I mean, we, we say it so much, we don't think about it, but if you'd never heard it before, you would think, oh, that's kind of a weird statement. We talk about God was really moving in the service. Yeah. What's that mean? Was he flittering, fluttering around here? I mean, what? <laughs> Holy Spirit really moved today. He did? Where'd he go? I mean, yeah. But it goes all the way back to this word. He was moving over the face of the deep. What's, it's, it's, he was hovering over, is, or brooding over, like a hen would over its eggs or chicks, you know. He, so, <clears throat> it's used elsewhere in Scripture. It's used to describe what happened with Abraham and Sarah in uh, Deuteronomy 32 when he's describing to Moses as he wrote Deuteronomy he's describing how a people that were not a people came to be a people and he uses this term and a couple others I'm going to get to in a minute but he said like an eagle rock hoffs over its young its eggs if you will he rock coughed over you. So, no, back up. Abraham and Sarah are barren like the earth in Genesis 1. She's been barren always. He is now uh, unable to reproduce because of his age. But they are, like the earth was, unable to reproduce. So what did God do? Well, Holy Spirit came. 
hovered around them. I'm not trying to get you to try, I'm not, my point is not to try to get you to envision him sort of do, doing something like that. What I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to bring to you is that he shows up and when he shows up and envelops the place, the person, the room with his power and his glory, life starts flowing. Yeah. Reproductive resurrection, power, zile, life, things are, new creations start springing forth. Things that are barren start reproducing. 